Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to fit the old D90 body to the 3 Racing x reel. In its current state, it's clear that the rear body posts are far too tall, so we're going to need to give them a bit of a trim to get the height right. And as sometimes happens, I got a wee bit carried away off camera and didn't record as much as I really should have. But chopping the ends off the posts isn't exactly rocket science. Next we glue the metal cups that the magnets on the top of the post stick to. Getting them in position is fairly easy. I popped the cups on the magnets, applied the glue and lowered the chassis into the upturned body. Left it overnight and jobs are good'un. For glue I used some good quality 60 minute epoxy so I had plenty of time to adjust things. And I mixed in some micro balloons to turn the fairly thin epoxy into more of a paste making it much easier to handle. You can just about see that the glue around the front cups has a bit of an odd shape. That's because the bonnet isn't flat and the cups were half sat on a bit of a shelf. To make sure the glue filled the void, I used a bit of blue tack to make a dam. Once the glue had hardened, the cup was fully supported. The body now drops on the chassis fairly easily. The front magnets find their position instantly. But the rear ones have a tendency to stick to the edge of the cups rather than drop into the center. Because the rear posts are so long, they're also quite flexible. You can, however, reach up and pull them into position but it's not ideal. The next little problem, you can see that the body's sitting fairly low on the chassis. With the added weight of the battery, it only gets worse. I didn't record it, but if there's any more sag in the suspension, the front wheels catch on the body very badly. We could adjust the preload of the dampers to raise it up a bit, but that's going to stiffen the suspension and it won't actually cure the problem. Under heavy load, the tyres will still rub. So, 3D printer to the rescue, I've made a little body lift kit, or at least part of it. I've made up some spacers that go up under the magnets to raise the body height. I found 5mm should do the trick, giving a couple of millimetres clearance around the tyres at full compression and steering. The fun thing with using a 3D printer is you can really easily make spacers of more or less any size without ending up with stacks of rods and tubes that end up hanging around in stock for years. Now because we're putting the spacers under the magnets, the stock screws are going to come up quite a bit short. I didn't have any on hand that were just the right length, so I grabbed a couple of countersunk screws that were far too long and cut the ends off. They don't have threads all the way to the head, but luckily the unthreaded part is just about covered by the magnet and the spacer. With one of the spacers fitted, you can see the height difference. It's not a vast amount, but it's enough to allow the suspension and steering to work without colliding with anything. The rears were a little bit different in that rather than putting the spacers under the magnets, I fitted them under the posts. That means rather than needing a long countersunk screw, they need a longer grub screw. So I just cut some M3 studding to length as I had some handy. Also, the spacers I ended up with are quite a bit bigger than the front ones. It wasn't intentional though. I screwed up the cut to shorten the post length, so made up the difference in the spacers. It's amazing how often that 3D printer saves me from myself. The main thing though, with the small body lift, the body looks much better on the chassis. The gap between the tyres and the top of the wheel arches looks a lot closer to what you might expect. Now we've got the body in position, we can have a proper look at the rear bumper. The one that comes with the kit does look pretty good, but it's a very flexible plastic, so it's purely a visual add-on. It's a perfect fit on the body, and it would use the tabs that the body came with to mount. But I've only got one partially broken tab left, so it's not really going to work. But we do, of course, have a plan. A little while ago, my mate Sean gave me this rear bumper to fit on my Traxxas TRX4. I never got around to fitting it, and I think it's going to be even better on this chassis. The bumper is machined aluminium, so it'll add some protection, and of course it will fit perfectly. Of course, we're not going to fit it to the body, we're going to fit it to a custom rear brace so any bumps get transferred to the chassis. While I design that, let's see about fitting the dashboard. It's been fitted with two extra LEDs and a steering servo behind the steering wheel. But other than that, it fits just like the original one, with two screws under the windscreen. And why are we fitting it now? Well, with it fitted to the body, it doesn't sit down all the way on the chassis. As part of the standard whack-a-mole of sitting bodies on chassis, every time you add something, there's always something else with a clearance issue. This time, it's the dash coming into contact with the gearbox, something that's remarkably hard to see on camera. Other than that, there should be plenty of space around the gear shift and all the other bits. 
looking at the dash it's quite obvious what's hitting so all you need to do is remove that large console bit in the center it's not really doing anything useful and you're not going to be able to see it when everything's assembled so it's not going to be missed now we can reattach it with its two screws and this time the chassis drops straight in with no issues the magnets grab nicely so we have some clearance if we look in through the window you can kind of see that there's plenty of space between the dash and the gearbox so that's that little job done okay then back to the rear bumper the back end of the chassis ends up almost exactly flush with the bottom edge of the body so the mount will need to drop down just to the right level we'll also need a little bit extra so we have a millimeter or so gap between the bumper and the body to allow things to move around a little bit in use here's the widget it's in black so it's not that easy to see in detail in the video so here's a quick look at it in sketchup it slides into the chassis rails just like the stock brace using two screws per side these get tapped out to m3 further down we've got the two holes that line up with the holes in the bumper these also get tapped out to m3 the rest of it is just a bit of reinforcement and a bit of a slope so if any terrain manages to get up in there hopefully it'll cleanly slide off to fit all we do is remove the stock part and its four screws slide in the new brace and reinstall the screws then we offer up the bumper and use a pair of m3 by 12 or a bit longer button head screws nip them up and we've got a very solid rear bumper that will actually protect the body it's also worth noting that the plan is to pop all the 3d printed parts up on thingiverse so to go with the mount i've also made up a printable bumper it won't be as tough as the aluminium one but it should still do the job and you can always upgrade to the aluminium one later after a bit of faffing around getting the rear magnets to sit in their cups we can see the body fits rather nicely around the bumper i did make one not quite so scale decision the bumper is a couple of millimeters proud of the body the full size d90s have the body all but flush but i figured having it proud would add just that extra bit of protection and unless you're a major land rover nut you're never going to notice anyway the next thing that comes up as a little issue are the sides of the body they're quite bendy and are going to be very vulnerable to getting damaged some nice rock sliders might be a good idea but for now i'm going to use these side steps that i found on thingiverse they extend under the bottom edge of the body so they'll add some protection from the bashes and scrapes they extend under the bottom edges of the body so they're going to add a bit of protection from bashes and scrapes they have two holes that line up with the holes in the body so to attach them we will use a couple of m2 screws and nylock nuts it's just a case of offering up the steps and doing up the screws when they're attached the sides of the body feel a lot more solid and we've got some nice sacrificial plastic that we can easily replace later a nice quick and easy fix right one more thing to do before we can call the body mounted now that we've lifted the body there's a rather large gap between the front bumper and the bottom of the body which doesn't look great now it would be tempting to copy the stock bumper and just make it sit a little bit higher however i notice when the steering's at full lock and the suspension's compressed the inside edge of the front tires rub the nice countersunk screws and washers if it wasn't for the square spacer and bumper mount there would be a bit of clearance and replacing the screws with button heads will help even more what I ended up doing is something similar to the rear, replacing the brace altogether. As well as gaining clearance for the tyres, it will also be quite a bit more solid. All you do is remove the stock brace and bumper, slide in the new brace, and install four M3x6 button heads. Looking at it in SketchUp, you can see the bumper mounts are a bit under the centre of the chassis. This allows around 2mm of clearance between the bumper and the body. Just as with the rear end, all the holes were tapped to M3. This time I don't have a fancy aluminium front bumper, so I went through a few 3D printed designs. The first one I tried was to make it look like the three racing one with the large curved ends. Now it fits okay, but with any steering input the tyres collide, so that's not going to work. The second attempt I made the ends a lot smaller, which is probably a bit more scale. This time in grey, because I ran out of the black plastic. This one's the same width as the stock bumper, but it still didn't quite look right. The third revision I made it a bit narrower, but otherwise it's the same. This time it fits almost perfectly. The steering can go lock to lock without any catching. There's a bit of clearance between the bumper and the body to account for things flexing and moving around. So I think that's going to do nicely. We just need to give it a nice coat of black paint to bring it all together. And there we go. 
It would still be good to print a black bumper, as the paint's probably going to rub off, but I think it looks the part. Scale enough to pass, but also works on the model. Well, that's the body mounted, so that's it for this week. The receivers arrived in the post, so next week we will fit the rest of the electronics on a nice custom mount, so we can keep all the wires nice and short. So, as always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!